Jared Easley is an author, a podcaster, co-founder of the podcast movement, and he and I had a chance to sit down recently and talk, and then I got to hang out with him in Florida, but you only get to hear us talk. You can't own your business until you own your life. I'm Chris Brogan. I'm CEO of Owner Media Group. We create courses and all kinds of other information to help you own the game that you most want to win. Learn how to communicate better, connect better, do the kinds of things that will give you leverage to create and build the kind of business that's going to help you see it through. This show is full of interviews, tips, and ideas to help you be the owner you need to be. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Hope you're doing well. I had the opportunity to hang out with my friend Jared Easley. He's got a podcast at starvethedoubts.com. You can check out podcastmovement.com, and he's on the tweeters at Jared Easley. Uh, he and I got to hang out at Florida at Michael Port's uh, heroic public speaking event. What a great event. Had a great time. Some of the other people there were uh, speaking wise were Scott Stratton, John Jantz, Dory Clark, Barry Moltz, and my friend Bob Berg, who I had not met in person yet. Hi, Bob Berg. Um, and then I got to hang out with my friends like Derek Coburn and Clay A. Bear, and also a new friend, Justin Harbinger, Jordan Harbinger. Jordan Harbinger, uh, and also Jared Easley. And I had the opportunity to talk to Jared pretty recently. And as I was writing about people that I thought were interesting in my newsletter yesterday, I thought I would add Jared. And then I realized, oh, well, I'm going to make him his own podcast episode. So this is us talking about this podcast movement and some other stuff. You know, Jared Easley like prepares. He has like hundreds of hours of notes or something like that. And he's a co-founder of an event called Podcast Movement, which is just amazing. I was opportune and I was, I had the opera. I can't even speak English, Jared Easley. <laughs> I'm so excited. I got to speak at your event the last time. The next one is coming up. You've got a Fort Worth, Texas event July 31st, August 2. Jared Easley, the co-founder of Podcast Movement. How are you? Uh, Chris, I'm good. It's funny you say prepared, and then you're like, "Hey, let's let's just chat." And I'm like, "Okay," and and now we're chatting. And so I'm I'm as about as prepared as anybody could be for this Skype chat. Thank but you. You are so prepared. Like you, like <laughs> when you interviewed me, it was like you know I spoke to your second grade teacher, and she said this and whatever. And I'm just like, nope, I got nothing. Uh, Chris, I'm gonna be honest about that. Like when I was starting interviews, I thought that's the way it works, and and you have to do that, and. I've been doing it now for almost two years, and, and I would, uh, I'm a little embarrassed to admit I'm not as prepared as I used to be. So it, I've, I've gotten a little comfortable, and maybe that's not a good thing. Huh. Well, now we got to talk about that for a second. So tell me just one little thing. Uh, are, is it because you are kind of getting um, complacent, or is it because like you're that good? I mean, I'm hoping you're going to say B, but I'm I, I'm it's sure a. It's, a, it's a combination. But what what's happened, Chris, is I put a lot of time into um, interviews and preparing for people that I was excited to meet and connect with. And that was valuable and uh, such a great thing. But what happened over time as I was doing interviews is I realized um, there was some good opportunities that opened up from connecting with people. Like connecting with you is fantastic. And and now you and I are on a a different uh, type of connection than had we not done that interview. But there was a lot of other people that I interview and I was grateful for their time. But it just just didn't really help me move the needle with my business, Chris. Mm. And um, while that was wonderful and I don't regret it, I realized the opportunity for me is to continue to grow my network, but to to maybe shift the focus a little bit, uh, not on the people who are so far up the mountain, but maybe just a little further than me. And those people seem to, they, they remember the trenches, not that you've forgotten the trenches, but there are people who have. And the people who remember the trenches are more likely to uh, just share and, and give back. And I, I found there is more opportunity for what I'm doing in that area. Now, this might be already the best interview ever about this kind of thing, because I'll tell you that, you know, first off, you're, you're absolutely right. Everyone who's kind of way up the food chain no longer even remembers what it's like. Number two, um, your point about, hey, this thing didn't really, you know, it was it was great and fun and all that, but it wasn't really, you know, moving the business needle. I mean, that, <laughs> oh, man, a lot of podcasters run into that wall. A lot of people in media in general, you know, I got the blog, I've been blogging every day and, you know, I'm about to lose my, my, my family and I'm going to live on the street or something like that. Mm-hmm. What was your turnaround? Because I'll tell you, you know, a lot of people are going to say, well, the guy runs an event called Podcast Movement, but you know, people don't know that when you run an event like that, you either break even or you're in debt for a year until you figure out how to try to make it work any better. Um, so you're not, you know, rich off the podcast movement. So what did turn it around? Like, what makes your business what it is now, right now? There, there was probably two or three things. So I'll, I, off the top of my head, what happened was I realized what what I was doing wasn't working. But what did work, Chris, is actually a lesson I learned from you. 
is, is you've always been really good about noticing other people. And I was thinking in this day and age with online business, you want to get noticed. But if you really want to get noticed, one of the best ways to do that, and I learned this from you, is noticing other people, right? If you start by noticing your ideal customer or the person that you want to serve or do business with, all of a sudden they start to think, man, that Chris guy, he's, he's pretty cool. And then you do that, you know, on a you know consistent basis. Not overdo it, but find unique ways to notice them. Whether it's comment on their blog or share their blog post or I don't know, listen to their podcast and mention it. You'd be surprised what just mentioning someone in a tweet can do. But it doesn't have to be anything over the top. It could be very simple. But just doing little things like that over time, rapport is created with you and the person that you're trying to serve or that you're trying to connect with. And if you just did a small group, like maybe five people, and said, I'm going to really try to get to know these people. I'm going to serve them. I'm going to notice them. What happens is a rapport is created, and over time, you've got five people that say, man, I just love Chris. Uh, let, me talk, let me tell you about Chris. Or Chris's name comes up, and they're like, oh, I know Chris. Chris is awesome. And that turns into 10, or that could turn into 20. And over time, more and more people are saying, I like Chris. And when a lot of people say, I like Chris, people listen to that. But when it's just you saying, hey, like me, uh, some people just won't care. And and that's what I had to go through, Chris, and I don't regret it, but I went through several months of that, and it was it was a difficult process. But as I started to realize, okay, in noticing other people, the people that aren't being noticed, but you could serve them and you could help them in whatever niche or whatever your area of the market that you're in, that's where you can start to create reciprocity. But that starts by building that rapport, by you giving first. And is this is like the human business that you taught for years and you still teach. You're serving those first, and they're serving them first, and then over time, they're like, I want to I reciprocate. I want to give back. And when you do have that product launch, or you do have that book, or you do have that thing, all of a sudden, there's people that say, man, I want to support Chris. This is exciting. This is cool. And I wrote a book last year, and I didn't think, man, I don't know if this is going to do, any, you know, do anything. But I had a lot of people through the podcast who had interviewed, who had been a co-host or, you know, whatever. And and they all of a sudden rose to the occasion and supported me in this book launch. And then I had an Amazon best-selling book. Yeah, I sold it at 99 cent on a certain day and got enough people to buy it. But, uh, you know, we know that and we can laugh at that. But a lot of people don't know that. And perception is reality for most people. And, and that created momentum, Chris. And then uh, the other thing, so, so noticing people is number one. Now we got on a tangent. Number two is collaborate. Don't try to do everything yourself. If you try to do everything yourself, you get burned out, you get frustrated, you potentially struggle and lose your family, hopefully not. Uh, I connected with other people that were stronger than me in certain areas, and we said, how can we help each other? How can we hear what the market's saying? How can we validate the idea and do it together rather than just one person? And some, sometimes that doesn't make sense, but for me it did. And that's how Podcast Movement got started, was we heard people saying we wish there was a podcast conference and then we needed to validate the idea because we didn't have tons of money to invest in it. We did Kickstarter, as you know, Chris, and then uh, we didn't have a big email list or anything, but we just had friends, people in our network that wanted to support it and wanted to share it, and they did. And last August, you were our opening keynote for an event that had 600 podcasters that never existed. And I just think that's such an encouraging story for someone out there who's struggling. It, th- these things can happen if you're willing to notice other people and you're willing to not do everything yourself. Yeah. I mean, so podcast movement, it's you, it's Dan Franks, it's Gary Leland, it's Mitch Todd. And, you know, you all just decided, hey, let's put this thing together. You had some conversations, you know, very different backgrounds. You know, Gary is, you know, a pro from the way old days, the first (laughs) podcast world. And, you know, Mitch, you know, kind of similarly. And then, you know, Dan is, you know, one of those up and coming fellas. And and you, I mean, you were just, you should just be voted like the most friendliest, nicest guy in the world who will say nice things about most everyone's podcast, even (laughs) if I don't believe you. Uh, you know, you're just very sweet that way. And, and you really encourage people. And when you listen to Star of the Doubts podcast, I mean, you, holy cannoli, you, you just cover the gamut of people because you're just, I just want to talk to good, interesting people. Now, all that comes to this sort of sense of community so that when you get these folk all in a room and all that, when they all come, like you said, over 600 people came. I couldn't believe that people paid so much money to sit in little private dinners and things like that, you know, with me, which ended up being sort of like a Kickstarter perk or something, which I'd I'd never been a perk before, (laughs) you know, but everybody just sort of felt, I mean, it just, I co-founded an event back in 06 called PodCamp. This felt like that, you know, that kind of real energy, like if you were there, you were there and it was going to go on. Now this coming year, you got to, you know, 
You've got John Lee Dumas, Mr. Uh, Fire Nation himself, my good man Lou Mangello, Pat Flynn, Sarah Koenig from Serial. That's crazy. And Aisha T- Tyler, I don't know who Girl on Guy podcast is, but she's a good looking lady. How did this all happen? <laughs> well, Aisha is a Hollywood actress. So she used to date uh, Ross on Friends. She's on The Talk by C- uh, CBS. She's on Whose Line Is It Anyway? She's, she holds her own, Chris. But uh, that said, it was timed up the game and. We were, uh, it was year one, so we had to prove ourselves and just tr- could we do the event. And uh, most of our friends were in the business type focused niche for podcasting. And, and so we got a little bit of flack for that. People said, hey, this event is for business marketing type of podcast. And there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, we wanted to be appealing to more than just those niches in podcasting. And we thought one of the best ways to do that is try to get other types of speakers that other types of keynote speakers that represent different niches. And that's why we uh, were very excited to invite Lou Mangello, who's one of the best travel podcasts for like eight years straight. He's like the Ric Flair of podcast awards. Mm -hmm. And then of course, Aisha Tyler and Sarah Keening from Serial, which is what we would consider the most popular podcast in the entire world, at least for right now. So it was a huge honor to be able to to work that out. It was a bit of a challenge for our team and, and just kind of fun to see if we could rise to the occasion. We worked together and brainstormed and uh, sacrificed heavily to make that work, as, as you can imagine, Chris. But uh-huh. we're thrilled to do the event again. We're honored to have the opportunity. And uh, we just announced today that we're doing the Academy of Podcast Awards, which is like a basically like the Oscars for podcasting. And there's other podcasting awards out there that are great, but it requires a lot of voting. And a podcaster will have to invite their audience to vote every day. And some people just aren't into that. This will be a, an Academy of respected podcasters that you know, Chris, you're a part of this. Uh, they, they're going to be voting on the winners. And we've got Stitcher Radio on board. And I just think, man, that's amazing. A, a year ago this time, Chris, we didn't even have podcast movement. We had, we're just about to launch the Kickstarter campaign. Now you fast forward and all these wonderful things have started to happen. But it really boiled down to uh, collaboration and, and noticing a lot of people and, and generously trying to serve those folks. So a, a lot of that I learned from you. Well, you know, psh, don't give me any credit for this. I mean, you're so way up and above it. I mean, you get super hot movie actors and super hot Lou Mangello and super hot cult leaders like Dumas. I mean, there's some, you got, it's just powerhouse. You know, I don't really know how you're going to top that. My guess is, you, you know, you're still working on like, I don't know, uh, Kevin Smith or something, you know, <laughs> Kevin Smith, Adam Carolla or whatever. We heard he listens to this show. So uh, this. Yeah. <laughs> In my dreams. But yeah. no, it, you know, it's what I loved about it. I mean, first off, you just spared no expense. It was quite the event. It just had, you know, heart and soul all the way through it. What I loved is everyone felt like they belonged. There was not a human in that audience. It didn't feel like they were where they were, you know, no one, I saw not a crying soul anywhere going, I'm not even supposed to be here. What the hell am I doing? So uh, how do you do that? How do you make that kind of community happen, uh, and I know you're absolutely going to refuse to take credit for it, but what plants the seeds of a community like that? Well, I, I think in our case, we already knew that the podcast community is pretty passionate anyway, so we were fortunate. And that may or may not be true for everyone listening and thinking about their niche, but uh, going back to the relationships and the connections, we knew a lot of the people that were there and the people that we that we didn't know. We made a generous effort to try to get to know. We had an awesome welcome party the first night with mariachi music. It was in Dallas, Fort Worth, so we thought a mariachi band would be the ultimate way to welcome them, and I still think that was a good idea. We're going to do it again, <laughs> but uh, just, just tried to really talk to a lot of people. Podcasters aren't afraid to talk, as you know, Chris. And yeah, so I mean, we just fostered that as much as possible. Uh, but I, I think uh, relationships, real relationships, happen uh, over time, and and you can uh, connect with people in, in Facebook groups, you connect with people online. But the face to face is so powerful, and so for a lot of people who've been connecting online uh, for a long, long time in the podcast community, they finally got together. It was like you know the one chance to be together, and they all came together, and it was like family. It was pretty cool. It really is. I, you know, I can't say enough about it. Now, in between that event, you actually have to have a life and all that sort of thing. What's your business like these days? What What is your business? Are you a podcast consultant more than anything else? Or like, what? how are you making your loot? Chris, I'd love to pretend on this interview to all your listeners that I have the perfect online business and I have quit my life and I, I just, you know, don't do anything all day and make all this money. That's not true. I, I do podcast movement and it is uh, growing and we've got some big sponsors that have come on board this year and we're actually going to cut checks 
this year. Year one, we all agreed not to cut checks, and uh, that was a difficult decision, but we knew to sacrifice, you know, to make this worth happening another year. And, and that's being in the trenches. That's making difficult decisions. And so I'm like a lot of other people. I do consulting work that has nothing to do with online business or podcasting on the side. And I wish there was a sexier answer, but that's something I'm still doing as I grow this business. And, and I'm not ashamed of it. it. It's the work that I'm putting in. And, and over time, I believe I'll be in a different scenario. But for today, I do contract work. And then on the side, I, I really do the side hustle stuff and work hard at that. And we're seeing fruit that's starting to be produced. But you told me a long time ago in the interview we did on Start of the Dallas, you know, this this type of work, uh, when you're building these relationships and stuff, it's like planting a garden. And you were absolutely right. <laughs> but if you're willing to plant the garden, you, you will reap the harvest. It just takes time. It sure does. I mean, people ask me that question all the time. They're like, well, I mean, just one day you did this and did, did that. Next thing you know, you're there. And I always say, look, I went, you know, I've had a job since forever. And then it wasn't until 2006 when I started PodCamp that on the second day of it, Jeff Pulver was crazy enough to say, hey, you should come work with me on my event. And I quit my, you know, my real life last big day job to, to what amounted to, you know, a job with a salary, just like any other human had. And it was another year and a half after that, before I actually started cutting my own checks out of my own company. So, I mean, people have these really weird ideas about how this gets done, but you know, you and I both have a lot of friends who went out crazy, quit, you know, had a family and quit and suddenly found themselves working at Best Buy or something because they didn't quite mm. figure out the, the business model. It takes a while with these new media business models. And, you know, once we understand, you know, the heartfelt side of it, then we actually still have to, you know, kind of get that financial side set up just so I would say. Is that how you're finding it? It is. It absolutely is. But uh, for the person who is at Best Buy who's listening to this, don't, don't be ashamed of Best Buy. Just just do your best at Best Buy and keep working on the side and, and don't give up. Heck yeah. No no question about it. I, it's amazing how many people, uh, you know, I, people come up to me all the time. I bet they do the same thing to you and they're just sort of like, uh, you know, still have the day job. <laughs> like it's some kind of very shameful thing. You know? Why? Well, I, it's, you know this, Chris, when you hear people who are doing great things online and they're making starting to make money and it's real easy to to say man i wish that was me and they don't necessarily understand how much work you've put into this chris or someone like john lee dumas or pat flynn and uh, not that they're any better than anyone else it, but you know that maybe they got a little bit lucky maybe they had some things uh, play out their way plus they just work really hard and they're really smart and over time anybody can can have success if they just pursue it relentlessly and wisely uh, as you've pointed out but yeah, I, I think uh, it's real easy to compare and say, man, I wish that was me and I should be on this level and I'm not on this level. And, and I would say, don't be ashamed of your level. Just continue to work on what you're working on. It's uh, <laughs> I, I realized that I've made more moves and I've had more opportunity open up when I stopped looking at the people on the top of the mountain who, uh, you know, comparing myself to them and started focusing on what can I do to serve other people around me and the people that I want to do business with. And when I changed that focus to that, that's when opportunity opened up. But it, I struggled until that point. Not that everything's perfect now because it's not, but I, I see more doors opening up. I see momentum. But it only started when I really f- took the focus and shifted it on who's who's my who's my peeps, you know, who, are, who do I want to serve, who's my cust- ideal customer. And when the focus shifted, that's when opportunity uh, started opening, but it takes time and yeah, try to try to make sure your focus is on your business and not on what everyone else is doing. Now, how do you identify those kinds of people that end up being your business? Like what's it, what's it mean to you to have a specific focus and all that sort of deal? Well, for me, it's, it's generously connecting uh, with people who are, I mean, in this case, we have a podcast event, so I like to connect with fellow podcasters. So I'm, I'm pretty intentional about that, Chris, and I, I try my best to continue to connect uh, through meetups, through online Facebook groups, through different strategies that I implement. One is uh, kind of interesting, but I use if this, then that. And uh, there will be some people out there who are on Twitter who will just shun this advice, and I totally understand, but it works well for me. I get on if this, then that, and I find somebody who's got a podcast, for example. I find their RSS feed for their podcast, Chris. Mm -hmm. And then if I want to support them and they're putting out good content and I want to encourage what they're doing, I will put their RSS feed and an if this then that formula that's ifttt dot com and I'll say if the RSS feed is whatever the RSS feed URL is then go to Buffer Buffer app of course for those who use that for Twitter 
And I tag the person's name. So when they put out a new podcast episode, it'll potentially go into my buffer and I'll tweet that out and I'll have their name tagged on it. And while I'll be the first to admit I'm not able to listen to every episode that that person puts out, you know, because I may be doing this for several people. Uh, what happens is the person, especially if they're new at podcasting, they see that I've tweeted their episode and I've tagged their name and at the bare minimum, they appreciate it. They say, man, I really appreciate Jared noticing this episode or at a minimum sharing it. And over time, I, I build a connection that way. So that's a really uh, funky little trick, but it works well for me. What I love about it is, you know, it is quite technically mechanical, you know, <laughs> it's just a thing. And, and yet, uh, you know, I'm sure every single person gets that little pipe up feeling that like, <gasps> somebody just mentioned my show. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that like, you know, robotics were at hand. It made them go, wee. So. Yeah, they, they really appreciate it. And, and it's simple. It doesn't take me a lot of time because it's automated. But again, I don't do this for just somebody just to do it. It's just somebody that I want to support, that I right. want to connect with and, and help. And I think at the end of the day, most people know that. And yeah, it's, it's automated, but it's great because then people don't always look at their news feed and Twitter, Chris, but they do see their hat mentions. And when they see, um, you know, maybe they're, they're just absolutely, I'm going to pick on Pat Flynn. We love Pat Flynn, but let's say they're, they're hoping Pat Flynn's going to share their episode. Maybe Pat does, maybe he's not, he doesn't. He's a pretty busy guy, but he's a gracious dude, but he may not share it. But when they see other people share it, they're, they're just like, man, somebody noticed, somebody cared, at least on, on a level enough to share what I was doing. And, and that, has the opportunity to start creating that rapport that we talked about, which over time creates that reciprocity. It's powerful stuff, man, but it works. You're right about that. No question. Jared Easley, we can go to starvethedoubts.com to listen to your podcast. You're a co-founder of the event Podcast Movement, podcastmovement.com. You can find you on the tweeters at Jared Easley. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today, Mr. Sir. My absolute pleasure. And that was it. Just like that. When I move, you move. Jared Easley. You can find him at starvethedoubts.com, which is his podcast. You can check out podcastmovement.com, which is the event with Dan Franks and Gary Leland and Mitch. I can't remember your last name, but Mitch is really nice as well. Um, podcastmovement.com. And you can also find him at Jared, E-A-S-L-E-Y, on the tweeters and also Instagram. My favorite day on Instagram with Jared is Friday. I'm in love. All right, let's play some music and then you know what happens. I am Chris Brogan. I am CEO of Owner Media Group. You can find all kinds of cool stuff. You know what? Check out Owner's Mastery Foundation Group. A whole bunch of people are getting ready to join right now. OwnerMag.com slash O-M-F-G. Yes, I know what that stands for. Check it out. It's daily advice and actionable business inspiration to keep you going on doing the job that you want to do in the way that you want to do it. Drop me an email, Chris at OwnerMag.com. Today is the birthday of one DJ Waldo. You can say happy birthday at DJ W-A-L-D-O-W on the tweeters if you want. Huh. You know, I had an interesting conversation with someone. They were saying that the uh, they were having trouble forgiving themselves. And I said, well, that's interesting because I think forgiveness is one of the coolest, most powerful tools in the whole wide world. And interesting that they were having trouble forgiving themselves. What do you think about forgiveness? What does that mean in your life? What does forgiveness uh, give you for power that you don't have right now. Interesting to know. You know, it's funny, just as I started talking to you, I looked over and I saw some, uh, bills and things like that. Uh, bills are awesome. I like letters from the internal revenue service as well. They're always, uh, cheery people. Let me see. Do I have anybody in my little podcast list? Hmm. Where's my podcast list? I don't see it. I wonder if I deleted it by mistake. That would be kind of depressing, wouldn't it? No, there's a podcast list. I just don't have anything in it, I guess. Oh, oh, that's it. All right. So listen to me. I want to say thank you. I want to tell you that I'm grateful that you're uh, listening to the show. Hey, I had a thought, by the way. I'm working on a new book, and the new book is going to be about, uh, well, I guess, one interesting way to think about it, it's really about belonging, but it's also about sort of how to use content of different kinds to build a really much more engaged community. Most people either talk about content or about uh, community building, but no one really understands kind of how to you know marry those two together. And I do because that's been sort of my whole career. So part of that was making me think about whether or not I want to carry on with the uh, what are you selling podcast idea? Because I think it'd be smarter to start doing one for uh, belonging and giving you some ideas about that and some of the other stuff going on with that. So 
I'm curious to know your take. Drop me an email, chris at ownermag.com, and I will keep you in the loop. Uh, that's why you're here. You're the secret group, so that's why you and I talk. So drop me a line, chris at ownermag.com. I think we'll get out of here, but uh, I just want to thank you. I'm very grateful that you're here, and I'm grateful that we have this relationship. So let's go. Shh.